Hello and welcome to Josh Chan 1205. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my favourite, my top five favourite TV series. This is my second attempt at this narration because the first attempt was full of banging like this, and I had to get rid of it because it was. Oh, it's just so annoying. It was ten minutes of narration which I've had to get rid of. Very annoyed at that. Um, sorry, I'm in a bit of a bad mood after that. But yes, this will hopefully get me in a good mood. My first narration was a bit shoddy anyway, so this will give me a chance to get it a bit better. Uh, I just want to talk to you about a, t uh, a series I'm planning on doing in the future called Guinness World Records Smashed, or Record Breakers. I'm not decided on which one to call it. I'm basically going to try and break a world record in the upcoming weeks for you. Uh, probably take me at least a year to do that. But yeah, I'm going to really try, really give it something to try and break a world record. Anyway, in this series, I'm going to be talking about my TV favourites. And at number five, drum roll please, it's the US Office. Yes. Big fan of the original series. Ricky Gervais is a legend, as is Stephen Merchant. If you haven't seen Steve's new, uh, well, it's not new recently, but it, it's, a, it's, his, it's a new venture from him. He used to do stand-up. He's brought it back. I watched it. I've got it on DVD. It's a very good show. Uh, he, I was surprised at how funny he is. But he is very funny. Very good comedian. So go and buy that. Really good. Uh, the US Office is about a group of co-workers, uh, including Jim, Pam, uh, Dwight, and I think that's Ryan on the end there, who I don't like at all, uh, headed by Michael Scott. I don't like Michael Scott as a boss. I think... Um, you know, uh, David Brent was a much better boss, and if they replaced David with Michael, it would be a, a, the perfect show, I think. You know, if David Brent was manager of the US office, it would be brilliant. Uh, Dwight Schrute, a big shout out to him, because he's my favourite man in the world. Uh, so at number four, we've got The Tenth Kingdom, a show that maybe not many of you have heard of, uh, because I'm so, uh, you know, against the moon's room. No, it's basically a show from Sky One. Well, it was originally from NBC in America, but it was shown on Sky One a few years ago when I was about 10, I think. 10 Kingdom? I was 10. Uh, is there a date? Not really. But, um, yeah, it's about a fantasy world uh, that's uh, parallel to New York, um, in which a father and his daughter, and a dog, uh, <laughs> and eventually, uh, you know, go into this alternate universe kind of thing and uh, a face with a uh, trying to get back and uh, the dad gets turned into a dog at one point and it's the daughter and his a talking dog you can understand the daughter and the daughter can understand him trying to get him back to a uh, man again it's a really good show if you haven't seen it then go and watch it it's on DVD from Amazon uh, I don't know how much not very much I don't think go and buy it at number three a little bit behind here it's Family Guy as you can see in the picture behind me <coughs> well, sorry but uh, yeah um, family Guy, of course, a hilarious cartoon comedy about a dysfunctional American family. It was either this or The Simpsons, and I just thought, I prefer Family Guy. It makes me laugh more. But, yeah, uh, of course you've got Brian Stewie, Chris, Peter, Meg and Lois, uh, going on a series of, uh, unconventional, uh, adventures. Of course, it hits on some serious topics as well. Uh, making fun at the uh, recent events of the world, of course. You know, very controversial. Uh, yeah, if you've got a, if you're very, you know, squeamish about, you know, racism and that sort of thing. I don't like racism at all, but you know, this does it funny. It doesn't mean it. It's funny, you know. Go and check it out. At number two, we've got the Big Bang Theory. Of course, I'm gonna like that, being as you know. That will be me one day, except without the intelligence of them. But, um, yeah, I just like this photo as well. I just want to point this out. How good is that photo there? The wolf, yeah, in their, like, uh, off-camera moments there. A little snap of them. I just thought that was good. Have a look at that. Of course, the Big Bang Theory is about a group of uh, university workers. You've got uh, Howard, the... Uh, oh, God. The engineer. Uh... Leonard and Sheldon are, of course, physicists, and Raj is an astronomer, kind of thing, you know. And Penny is a cheesecake factory waitress who lives opposite them. And, of course, Leonard woos her, Howard gets married to Bernadette, Raj is kind of in love with Howard, Sheldon goes out with Amy Farrah Fowler in a very unconventional relationship, and everything's all good in the end. Uh, yeah. And at number one, 
it's the Inbetweeners, of course it is, because it's one of the best shows in recent history. You know, I would have put the um, Only Falls Norses in here, but um, it it was all before my lifetime, and I wanted these to be within the time I was alive, which is sad because maybe I'll do a classic TV show, uh, top five, in which Only Falls Norses will top that. I said no point watching it, really, you know, it's going to be number one. <laughs> but yeah, this is number one for this series because it's just brilliant. If you haven't seen it, why not? I'm so annoyed they've, they've sold it onto America because, you know, they're going to, they're going to, you know, smash it to bits, aren't they? It's going to be Americans who don't have the same sense of humour as the British. It's a typical British show about typical British teenagers who, are, it's like American Pie. American Pie is the American version of the Inbetweeners. They don't need to buy it. They've got one. You know, American Pie. But it means they can't make any more series or films because they don't have the rights to it anymore and I mean I always wonder about selling the rights you know because uh, it was like when um, MySpace Tom sold MySpace you know he's got the money for that now but if it had become bigger which it didn't but I mean just in case it did you know he would have been earning money that kind of money every single you know year instead of one lump sum, which is what I thought about the Inbetweeners. If they kept making series, they'd keep making money, rather than just selling it. I don't know how it works, but I wouldn't have sold it. You know, because a lot of, all of the fans were annoyed at that. Uh, I want to see more series. I do. I really do. I really do. And of course, there was a film out, which didn't make it into my top five favourite films, which is a shame. It would have made it into my top ten, though, if I did that. Um, I would like to make an amendment to my top five films. I would like to replace Wimbledon, sorry Wimbledon, with The Never Ending Story. Because The Never Ending Story is incredible. <laughs> Hands up if you love The Never Ending Story. If you're a kid and you used to watch it, like I used to. Oh, so brilliant. And that's going in at number five. So yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Osh200. O S H two O O. Same thing. If you want to follow me, if you want to add me on PSN, at, uh, not app, but just Os two hundred. Uh, leave a little like if any of these film, um, TV series made it into your top five. Uh, if if not, comment what your top five favourite are. You know, I'm open to interpretation. You know, I might give them a go. You know, you know, give it a go. And uh, subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Or you can check out some of my other series that I do on here. I do my Euro series, of course, if you're a football fan. And uh, you're missing a, a bit of a analysis from the Euros, which I don't imagine you can be. You, I mean, you get enough of that. You switch on Sky Sports and they're talking about the Euros. But if you want a, an outsider's perspective from uh, outside the football arena, uh, yeah, then uh, have a check of that. Uh, or you can uh, have a look at my Challenge Josh series. There's currently two videos in there. My butter and mayo eating challenge, and of course the cinnamon challenge, which I put in, which was very distressing for me. Uh, yeah. Also, leave a comment on those videos. What you want me to do next? I'm just giving you a little roundup. I think so I've hit 30 videos recently. I've done 30 videos. I think this is number 34 or number 33. Just ridiculous. Being as I only started as a YouTuber a couple of months ago, I've been barraging you. It's been a barrage of videos recently. So I've had nothing to do, you know, I've been off college after my exams and just talking to the camera rather than or talking to my laptop with pictures behind the screen because uh, I don't want you to see my face oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, I will be doing a face video uh, in the next few days I think because if you're a Koran Radio uh, listener if you listen to the Alex Baker show you'll have heard of Date Haley, maybe I was going to do a little joke uh, entry into that. Uh, so uh, once I've done that, you can check that out. Have a little watch of that. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I might not do that though. I don't know. Depends how I'm feeling really. Anyway, that's it for me.